Welcome to A Message from Heaven, presented by The Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee, where John Shannon Sr. is the preacher. Here you can expect a cordial greeting from those who love God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is our privilege to invite you to study with us from the Bible, God's holy and divine will made known unto man. And now presenting ministering evangelist, John Shannon Singer. Welcome again to another message from heaven. I'm John Shannon, a preacher for the Church of Christ that meet in the location of 2400 James Road here in Memphis, Tennessee. We are grateful that you have allowed us to come into your home by way of television. Thank you so very much uh, for watching us on a regular basis. Thank you and we hope that God will continue to bless you in the areas which he see the need. Thank you for coming our way. Today, I want to call your attention to the book of Romans. The chapter is eight, and we'll look at just one verse in this particular text. Romans chapter eight uh, and verse number one. Romans eight and verse number one. Notice the text, if you would. Paul says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. From this particular verse, want to use for subject today, no condemnation if, let me do that again, no condemnation if. Well, what do you mean no, not any? What do you mean condemnation? That means that you're lost, uh, condemned, uh, contaminated. Let me do it like that. No condemnation if. Well, what is the if? That's the condition. Now, let's notice the text. Paul said to the Romans, there is therefore now, currently, no condemnation. That means you're conserved. To them, that's the creature. Now, first point in this Lesson is surety, uh, certainty. Point number two, it says, which are in Christ Jesus. So point number two, verse eight, uh, uh, one B, uh, clarify, uh, certify, uh, clarification. Watch it. Which are in Christ Jesus. Then point number three, one C, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's the conditions. Now you see why the subject is no condemnation if. The if has reference to the conditions. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now let's look at point number one, uh, verse 1A. There is therefore now. Right now, in the entire world, we're speaking of a spiritual a nature. Right now, presently, currently, Paul says there is therefore now, right now, no condemnation. What do you mean no condemnation? You're concerned. You're saved. You see that? To them, what do them? The creatures 
What creatures? The same creatures that Jesus said in Mark 16 and verse number 15 and 16. He said to his apostles, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every, watch it, creature. Well, what creature is it? He that believeth. Those are the creatures that is no condemnation. What? He that believeth. So it has to do with mankind. Is that all right? Talking about man. Not talking about the lower class animals, right? We're not talking about a goat or a chicken, a cow, a horse, a bull. We're talking about the creatures that's made in the image of God who can believe. So God gives mankind a guarantee. No condemnation to them, all mankind. You know, the Bible tells us uh, in Timothy that God who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, God does not want anybody to be lost. If you are lost, it's not because God did not uh, set up a system, a scheme by which he could save man. And this scheme of redemption started all the way back in the Garden of Eden. And at Calvary, it was fulfilled. Now, God want all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Peter wrote in one of his epistles, 1st and 2nd Peter 3, 9, he says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness, but his long sufferings to us would, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. God want all men everywhere to be saved. Well, why would you say that, preacher? The Bible says, and God commanded his love towards us, Romans 8, Romans 5, and verse 8, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. John 3, 16, but God so loved the world. He didn't just love the world. He so loved the world that he gave. Anytime there's some love involved, there's some giving. So loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now let me point out to you on the word believeth. Believeth is a synecdoche. It's a part for the whole. What do you mean a part for the whole? Well, there's other things to do. Believeth is a synecdoche, a part for the whole, whole for the part. Well, I don't understand. If I told you take this key and crank the car, don't you have enough sense to know that it's not the key only that crank the car? When God, when Jesus said, he that believeth, watch it, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Don't you know believeth is a synecdoche, a part for the whole. This believe is not the only thing. I'm sure you understand that. And if you're a preacher to listen to me, and you're telling your congregation, all you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then you'll say, well, I can go to the Bible and pick out a scripture that says you're saved by hope, but not hate hope only. Hope is a synecdoche. It's a part for the whole. I could go to the same Bible and show you what the Bible says. Baptism does also now say, but not baptism only. Repentance say, but not repentance only. Right? It's a combination of things. And we have to have a, some common sense when we study the Bible. Amen. Now, let's get to our text here. Surety. God will have all men to be saved. Come to the knowledge of the truth. So there's surety or guarantee. Then verse point number two. It says, which are in Christ Jesus. That's the state. There are two states. The first state, you are either in Christ and your salvation, or you're not in Christ. 
you're in Christ and in his church, you're in Christ and one of his children, or you're in a world of darkness where there's no light spiritually. Now, so to state, so we are certified or we're guaranteed our certification when one is in Christ. Now, I have a glass in my hand. And when we say in Christ Jesus, on the inside, in Christ Jesus. Well, why are you putting emphasis on the inside? Because God deposited all of the spiritual blessings that you have for man in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places are in Christ. Anything that's not in Christ, watch it, uh, is not a spiritual blessing. Are you listening to me? Now, so when you're in Christ, you're in the position. But when you're in Christ, you're in the purpose, in the person. And when you're in Christ, you're pardoned. Now, what state? are you in? What, what state are you in? You're either in a lost state or you're in a liberated state. People that's not in Christ, they are in a lost state. But the people who are in Christ are is in a liberated state. They have liberty. They have salvation in Christ. Are you listening? So the Bible says there is therefore now presently no condemnation to them. That's the people who are in Christ. Oh, ain't that good? Yeah. In Christ. That's where it's at to be in Christ. Young people, you don't know what where the happenings are? The happenings are in Christ. If you stay in this world and live 100 years and accomplish many things in this world on the physical side. But if you fail in your tour upon this earth to get in Christ, you will never have remission of sin. And remission of sin is the greatest blessing that one could ever have in this life. Let me, let me just slow down a little bit. Let me talk to your head. Would you listen to me? Listen to me this morning. The greatest blessings that one could accomplish in this life is to be in Christ. And when you're in Christ, you have heaven's blessings when you're in Christ. What do you mean? You're in the right state in Christ. You have salvation, which is in Christ. You have grace, which is in Christ. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 1, Paul said, Thou therefore, my son, watch it, be strong in the grace that's in Christ. Or preacher, what is grace? Grace is an unmerited favor, something that you did not earn and you cannot earn it. It is a gift from God but you must be in the right state to receive it. Let me illustrate like this. Say in the state of Mississippi, they were giving some blessings that you couldn't get anywhere else on the physical side. And you live in the state of Tennessee. If you want the blessings that the state of Mississippi is offering the world, what do you think you have to do? Well, you would say, well, I preach it. That's common sense. One need to get into the state of Mississippi. Well, sure you can understand that. Now, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in the state of being in Christ. And that's the state of salvation. And the people who fail to get in Christ will fail, will not receive the salvation that's in Christ. Now, eternal life is in Christ. What'd you say? Yeah. 
I told you, see, eternal life is a spiritual blessing. 1 John 5, 11, and this is the record that God hath given unto us, eternal life, watch it. And this life, where is it? In Christ. Now look, that's simple, isn't it? Salvation is in Christ. 2 Timothy 2.10, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation, where is it? In Christ. Ah, child of God, spiritually speaking, is in Christ. In Galatians 3, in verse 26, the apostle Paul said, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. What? Where is a child of God in Christ? Now, we're not talking about children of God physically because we're all the children of God physically, but spiritually speaking and eternally speaking, the children of God spiritually are located in Christ. And we're talking about spiritual things now. A new creature. What do you mean a new creature? Same thing as born again. When you say a new creature, are you talking about physically? No. We're talking about spiritually. And the man to become a new creature is not the inner man, but the outer man. And remember the apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, uh, for which cause we faint not, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. What's the subject of the new birth? The inward man. So when you become a new creature, it's not the outer man that perish, that becomes a new creature, but it's the inner man. And that inner man is in Christ spiritually. Now, let me illustrate. When you're born again, if you're black, you're going to stay black. If you're white, you're going to stay white. If you got long, silky hair, it's going to stay the same. If you have nappy hair, it's going to stay the same. It has nothing to do with physical changes, but it has to do with the spiritual changes, the spirit in man. I know you understand that, but it takes place in Christ, all right? You're saved in Christ. Jesus said in John 10, 9, right, uh, that you're saved in him. Is that all right? Remission of sin. What do you mean remission of sin? To have forgiveness of sin, it takes place in Christ. The Bible tells us in Colossians 1 and verse number 13 and 14, it says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Watch this. In whom? That has reference to being in Christ. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Well, where does it take place? In Christ. Now, let me pause a moment. Many times, individuals think, think or advocate that remission of sin takes place in us. No. You got the wrong understanding. Remission of sin or forgiveness of sin is an executive act. What do you mean? Remission of sin comes from God. And God recognized remission of sins only in Christ. So it don't take place in your mind. You know when it takes place after you get in Christ. You know you have forgiven sin. But don't pat here and say, I know that I have remission of sin because I feel it. It has nothing to do with feeling. It has to do with being in the state of being in Christ Jesus. You understand that, don't you? Well, what, what do you mean, the remission of sin? You have to be in a certain state. Because the blood of Christ, according to Ephesians 1, 7, is in Christ. And when you in Christ, you're in his blood. And when God looks at the blood, watch it. He, he doesn't look at sin. He looks at the blood of Jesus. Why? Because Paul said, 
he became sin for us who knew no sin. I believe that's in Romans chapter 2 Corinthians 6, I believe it is, in verse 21, around somewhere along in there. Is that all right? Now, so watch this. Eternal, God, eternal purpose. What do you mean, God's eternal purpose? I want you to lick your fingers and go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Let me take my time and show you something. Is that all right? We're talking about being in this state. We've discussed the surety, that's the certainty, a guarantee. And the state, uh, we're certified. Uh, we got it when we're in the state of being in Christ. But now, these spiritual blessings that we're looking at. Now, God's eternal purpose. In Ephesians 3 and verse 10, look at it. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, many times individuals make a mockery at the church. But the church is according to God's eternal purpose. And God purposed the church in Christ. That's why I'm teaching today and the rest of my life that until you get in Christ, it is impossible for you be in the church of Christ. But when you are in the church of Christ, it is impossible for you to be in Christ because the church of Christ or the body of Christ is in Christ and God purposed it that way. He purposed the church in Christ. Now watch this. There was never a time when the church didn't exist. Why? Because it first existed in the mind of God before he even created the world and before he made man his own image and likeness God had the church in mind, and it's according to his eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus. Now, you can join any church you want to. You can sing and shout and have a good time. You can give your money, and you can live the best you can. But if the church that you are worshiping in is not in Christ, you're just wasting your time. Well, I'm sincere. You're just sincerely wrong. Well, preacher, you don't have to be so mean. I'm not being mean. I'm speaking the truth in love. But somebody need to tell you before they place you beneath the sod. You need to know this before you go out of this world. That God has but one church, and he purposed this church in Christ. And all spiritual blessings, including the church, is in Christ. And the moment you get in Christ, you got it all. There's nothing else missing, lacking. Now, is that all right? His eternal purpose. Redemption is in Christ, Ephesians 1.7. And we know this familiar passage. Revelation 14, 13. Let's look at it. Revelation 14, 13. Let's turn and look at it. Revelation 14, 13. John said, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Unto me, write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, say the Spirit, they do that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow thee. Well, why did you go here? You see the little phrase, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Well, what do you mean? When you are in the Lord, you're in his church. Well, why are you blessed? 
Because when you're in the Lord, you're not only in his church, but you're pardoned, you have remission of sins, redemption, eternal life, you're a child of God. So when you die in the Lord, where do you think you can go? You can go to heaven. Well, if you don't die in the Lord, what does it mean to die in the Lord? To die in Christ, to die in his church, to die where all the spiritual blessings are. Well, what's the answer? If you die outside of Christ, there's no way possible you can be saved. Well, preacher, would you tell us how to get in Christ? You must hear and believe the gospel, Acts the opinion seven. How Christ died, was buried, and resurrected from the grave. You've got to repent of your sins, Acts 17, 30. You've got to confess the name of Christ, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And you must be baptized in water for the midst of sin, Acts 2, 38. Now, once you do that, that's what God requires. Then the Lord will add you to the church, and you add it to the Lord, Acts 2 and verse 47, and Acts chapter 5 and verse number 14. Uh, Acts 11, 4, 24. Now, watch this. Once you get in Christ, look at the rest of the text. It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. These are the conditions. You can't live any way that you want to live once you get in Christ. That old stuff that you did in the world, you got to make some changes. Well, I thought once I was saved, it was nothing for me to do. Well, I want to know why were the epistles written. There's some things Paul speaks of, putting, putting off and putting on. When you obey the gospel, the Lord changes your state. You get in Christ. But your conduct and your character, you must take God's word and read it and learn what God will have you to do to satisfy him. You must study God's word, rightly divide it. Show yourself approved unto God. Now David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. You're saved, sure, but you got to walk according to these rules in the gospel. I certainly thank you, and I hope you benefit from this lesson. No condemnation is. May God bless and keep you to the next time. A message from heaven has been presented by the Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. We're located west of the intersection at James Road in Hollywood. Visit us each Lord's Day where you will receive a cordial greeting. Our schedule of services are Sunday Bible class at 9.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. Sunday worship at 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Call us at 901-357-9090. Also, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.jamesrdchurchofchrist.com.